Now we will talk about thermal properties of crystals. So we start with the specific heat of solids. So uh, first we will deal with the classical model. Now let's say that we have an atom with mass m in a crystal that makes harmonic motion of amplitude xm and angular frequency omega and c the force constant. So we can write this uh, oscillation as x is equal to xm cosine omega t. So this is the displacement from the equilibrium uh, position versus time. So if we write the total energy of this atom, there is the kinetic energy, one half mv square, and potential energy, one half cx square. And the equation of motion is a uh, simple harmonic motion, remember, is uh, x double dot is equal to minus omega square x. So x double dot is acceleration, so acceleration is minus c over m x. So we find that minus m omega square x is minus cx, so c is m omega square. So this is our force constant, that is m omega square. Now, the, if we write the velocity as a function of time, we take the first derivative, and the derivative will give us a minus omega xm sine omega t, absolute value will give us omega xm absolute value sine omega t. Acceleration is second derivative, we will have cosine again, so it will be minus omega square xm cosine omega t, but I look at its magnitude, it's omega square times magnitude of x. So the energy at any time is 1 half mv square kinetic energy plus 1 half m omega square x square the potential energy in m over 2 parentheses i see two quadratic terms v square and omega square x square and uh, this according to classical statistical mechanics uh, by equipartition theorem will give a contribution to the average energy kt plus kt um, so that's going to be um, uh, so kt over 2 plus kt over 2, the total will be kt per harmonic oscillator. So equipartition theorem tells us that we have 1 over 2 kt per quadratic term in the energy. Now, uh, we can do this calculation explicitly according to statistical mechanics. The probability, uh, statistical mechanics tells us, that the probability that the system has an energy between E and E plus dE is probability distribution function times dE, and that is proportional to the number of states uh, that we have uh, with energies E to E plus dE. So we can write this as density of states dE, E to the E minus E over kT, that's the Boltzmann factor, dE. So basically, this is canonical distribution. Canonical distribution. And why is it a uh, canonical distribution? Because you have one atom in thermal contact with the rest of the crystal, so with a huge uh, reservoir. So e to the minus e over kt describes for us the probability that a state with energy e is occupied. That's the Boltzmann factor. So if you write down the average energy, that is sum n equals 0 to infinity, energy of uh, the nth state, en, e to the minus en over kt times degeneracy, if there are more than one uh, states with the same energy, divided by uh, sum over n equals 0 to infinity e to the minus en over kt fn, that is called uh, z, the partition function. So this is our partition function. Okay, so if the sum is turned into an integral, then we have to consider the number of states in the energy interval between E and E plus dE, so that's when we introduce the density of states. The density of states may be more than one if the system is degenerate, the atoms may be in more than one state with energy E, but in a one-dimensional simple harmonic oscillator, the energy levels are non-degenerate, density of states is one. Why is that? Because one value of energy corresponds to one particular amplitude of vibration, so there is only one state per energy, and uh, energy is a continuous uh, variable because the amplitude of the vibration is also a continuous variable. So if you do this calculation explicitly, integral from 0 to infinity e, e to the minus e over kt dE, so remember density of states is 1 here, so we don't have degeneracy. Uh, so we have for e over kt equals to x, dE over kt is dx, 
So we can do this transformation when a e goes from 0 to infinity, x goes from 0 to infinity. For e, I substitute ktx. For e to the minus e over kt, I substitute e to the minus x. For de, I substitute kt dx. And I do the same at the bottom for the partition function. Kt's will cancel. So I find that there's one kt remaining. Integral 0 to infinity x, e to the minus x dx, divided by integral 0 to infinity, e to the minus x dx. Now I can do integration by parts. Uh, so we have u is equal to x, du is equal to dx, dv is e to the minus x dx, v is minus e to the minus x. So it's going to be uv minus integral v du. So we have uv x uh, minus e to the minus x, uh, minus integral v du, plus e to the minus x dx. So integral from 0 to infinity, minus x e to the minus x, e to the minus infinity will give us 0. On the other limit, I will have 0 from x. So that gives us 0. So then we have the integral 0 to infinity, e to the minus x dx, divided by itself. So they cancel. The answer is kt. And for three dimensions, once again, using the equipartition theorem, I could reach the same result. I would have three kt. So for each axis, x, y, and z, I have a kt contribution. So the total is three kt, average energy per atom. So for n atoms, uh, if they are vibrating independently of each other, the average energy will be three capital N kt for capital N atoms. So if I have a monatomic crystal with Avogadro's number of atoms, so this is Avogadro's number, that means I have one mole. So the total average energy of the crystal would be 3 Avogadro's number kT. Avogadro's number times Boltzmann constant is called the gas constant, universal gas constant. It has a value 8.3 joules per mole Kelvin. So the average energy is 3 RT. Then the molar specific heat, the specific heat of 1 mole, is 3 R. So that is basically defined as the derivative of the average energy with respect to uh, temperature. So that is 3R. So that gives us a numerical value, 24.9 joules per mole Kelvin. And most importantly, it is independent of temperature. This is known as Dillon Petit Law. Now, this result agrees with the experiment we find only at high temperatures. Uh, whereas for low temperatures, we see that the molar specific heat decreases with te temperature. How does it decrease with temperature? We will talk about two different models, Einstein model and Debye model, to account for it. But in the classical limit, when we have uh, all uh, modes excited at, at a very high temperature, we don't have, we don't need to talk about uh, phonons because all vibrational modes are excited. Uh, we, we will have the molar specific heat given as 3R independent of temperature. 